Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Anu Kumar Kapoor from the Department of Anthropology in the of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Body Fluids in Personal Identification 1 from the paper Forensic Anthropology. The objectives are, in this module we shall be focusing on the most important body fluid which is blood and its examinations. Student will also learn about how to distinguish between any red colored liquid and blood. Also, whether the blood is of human origin or not. If the blood found at the scene of crime is of human origin, then blood group is to be determined. Once established that the liquid is blood and it belongs to human origin and blood group is known, we will further do DNA analysis to ascertain the identity of the person whose blood we have examined. Finally, whether the blood spatter analysis yields any important information regarding the commissioning of act. We will also study the blood spatter and in importance at the scene of crime. In the field of forensic science, or anthropology, serology and DNA analysis are closely related so much so that in many laboratories they are included within the same unit collectively titled forensic biology or forensic anthropology. In the forensic laboratory, serology analysis refers to the screening of evidence for beauty body fluids while DNA analysis refer to the efforts to the individualized body fluids to a specific person. In most cases, body fluid identification is performed on evidentiary items before DNA analysis is attempted. Depending on the qualification of laboratory personnel or scientists, analysts can be trained to perform either serology or DNA analysis or can be trained in both the disciplines. While serology procedures have been employed for most of the 20th century and the techniques have essentially remained unchanged, DNA has emerged in the forensic realm within the last two decades and its applications and technology are continuously developing. Blood. Blood identification is central to many homicide investigations and is also useful in cases involving aggravated assault, sexual assault, and burglary. The evaluation of blood evidence can be crucial to substantiate a complainant's or suspect's account of alleged events. The presence of blood on evidentiary items can be critical in establishing guilt or innocence during criminal proceedings. The analysis of blood evidence can be important not only in establishing which individual might have been bleeding, but also in the manner in which blood was deposited. Blood spatter interpretations can be valuable in determining how blood was deposited on an item or at a scene, thus making it useful in crime scene reconstruction. Blood constituents or blood composition. Blood accounts for 7% of the human body weight. The average adult has a blood volume of roughly 5 liters, which is composed of plasma and cells. These blood cells consist of RBC, that is red blood cells or erythrocytes, WBC, white blood cells or leukocytes, and platelets or thrombocytes. By volume, the red blood cell constitute about 45% of the whole blood, the plasma about 54.3% and white cell about 0.7%. Whole blood contains red cells, white cells and platelets suspended in plasma. Plasma is the liquid portion of the blood that carries platelets, red cells and proteins through the body. 
Alert cells contain hemoglobin, an iron-containing protein that carries oxygen throughout the body and gives blood its red color. White blood cells, that is WBCs, also called leukocytes, are an important part of the immune system. These cells help fight infections by attacking bacteria, viruses, and germs that invade the body. White blood cells originate in the bone marrow but circulate throughout the bloodstream. Platelets are vital to life because they help prevent massive blood loss by helping your blood to clot. From this diagram, we can see the different types of blood. That is, first is the blood blood cells, then we have white blood cells, and then we have platelet, platelet cells. Now, all these three, they show different structure, and in some, it is nucleus is there, in some, nucleus is absent. That is why they are different in structure. Transic examination of blood. One of the most common types of body fluid found at crime scenes, particularly the scenes of violent crimes, is blood. Though the appearance of blood is often quite distinct, chemical tests are essential to confirm its identity. Initially, presumptive tests are used at the scene, which will merely confirm that the substance in question is most likely blood. Though the species is not established at this point. Presumptive blood tests are usually based on the color change or the semilunescence of a particular region when it comes into contact with the hemoglobin in blood. The following are few commonly used presumptive tests for presence of blood. Presumptive test. Presumptive tests are also known as preliminary tests, screening tests, or field tests. These establish the possibility that a specific bodily fluid is present but do not conclusively prove the presence of a specific substance. First is phenolphthalene test. It is also known as the Cassin-Mayer test. A phenolphthalene solution is used to show the possible presence of blood based upon a paradox reaction of hemoglobin which produces a pink color. The second is benzidine test. A benzidine region is used to show the possible presence of blood based upon a paradox size reaction of hemoglobin. A positive reaction in the presence of blood will give bluish green color. The third is leukomericide green. Leukomericide green is similar to castle mayer test replacing the phenolphthalein with leukomericide green when added to the substance a green color will be produced if blood is present limonol test limonol is used in solution or sprayed onto suspected surfaces this gives a strong blue fluorescence when viewed with the ultraviolet light the limonol reacts with the hematin, a substance formed as blood stain age, and produces a luminescence which is best observed in the dark. Confirmatory tests. The confirmatory tests are also called as conclusive tests. These are conducted after preliminary test results positive. The following confirmatory crystal tests are performed for blood. First is Takayama test. Takamaya region is added drop wise on the microscopic slide and subjected to mild eating. Hemochromogen crystals form confirms the presence of blood. The crystals are observable under a microscope and look like salmon pink rhomboid crystals. Second is Tachaman test. Tachaman region is added drop wise in the blood stain on a microscopic slide and crystals are viewed under microscope. The reaction first converts the hemoglobin to hemin and then the halides react with the hemin to form characteristic brownish yellow rhomboid crystals. Once it is ascertained 
that the given liquid is blood, then we would test for species of origin. There are number of species origin tests available. Species origin test. The species origin test is done to establish whether the given blood sample belongs to a human being or not. If it does not belong to a human, we do not do any further examination, but if it is found to be that of a human, then we will further do blood grouping and finally DNA analysis to pinpoint one person or accused in forensic perspective. The species origin test is based upon antigen antibody agglutination reaction. The antibodies are very specific to particular antigen only to which it binds. The first is precipitin test. The precipitin test or ring test is conducted to determine the origin of species. In a test tube, one ml of human antiserum is taken and few drops of suspected blood is, is added on top of it. If the blood is from human origin, it will form a precipitin ring at the junction of two liquids to give positive result. Second is radial diffusion method. Most species identification uses radial diffusion of antigen and antibody. Here, antibody is mixed with agar gel on a plate into which punched carrier are made, that is 3 micrometers to 5 micrometers, in which different antigens are taken. If a ring-shaped precipitin band is formed around the creator from where the antigens migrate concentrically to react with a specific antibody, we would know that the blood taken in that creator is specific to the anti-human anti-serum present in gel on plate. After the antigen diffuses for a time, usually 2 to 10 hours, the migration ceases as the amount of antigen introduced exceeds the antibody in gel. This test is useful when we get different blood group samples from crime scene and we do not know their origin. Third is double diffusion or osterloni test. In the osterloni test, also called as double diffusion in two dimension ectophoresis, an optical field is created rather than diffusion to move the blood extract that is the antigen and antibody through the gel. Osterloni plates can be purchased or made in the laboratory. Extracts are made from the stained areas of interest and from nearby unstained areas, that is, substract controls. Note that the use of unstained control is a fundamental principle in forensic immunological testing. Stain and control samples are loaded in the outer valves and a drop of anti-human anti-serum is loaded into the center valve. The process is repeated for anti-sera to other species such as dog, cat, and cow. This may include the species from which anti-serum was obtained, for example, rabbit. The plates are left at 4 degrees centigrade for a suitable period, which can range from a few hours to overnight, and the serum proteins and antibody molecules diff diffuse outwards from the cell. A precipitin band is formed when the diffusing stain contains proteins that are recognized by IgG molecules in diffusing antiserum. The precipitin band is sometimes clearly visible to the naked eye, but it is normal to stain the plates with amido black or other general protein stain to enhance sensitivity and clarity. Crossover rectophoresis for species identification is conducted using agar at a pH of 8.6. Stain extracts are loaded into the valves arranged in a line at the cathode end of the plate and the antiserum is loaded into the valves at the anode end. During electrophoresis, the electrical field drives the serum proteins towards the end node, but the IgG molecules 
which are essentially neutral at this pH value are driven to the cathode by the process of electroendosomosis. The antigen antibody precipitation occurs at the interface between the two rows of wells. Electroendomosis occurs because the sporting medium acquires a net negative charge. If free, the negatively charged molecules would migrate to the end node, but this is not possible because the agar is immobilized on the plate. Instead, the effect is countered by positively charged water molecules migrating to the cathode. Blood grouping, ABO blood grouping, prior to the advent of DNA analysis for forensic science, other methods were developed for the comparison of biological fluid stained to individuals. The most common of these is ABO blood group typing. ABO blood typing identifies specific antigens present on the surface of the blood cells. Within the population, individuals may have different forms of these antigens producing what is commonly referred to as a person's blood type. Comparing the blood type obtained from an evidence stain to that of known individual allows the determination of whether the individual could have contributed to the stain. A proportion of individuals known as secretors produce similar substances in other body fluids in addition to blood, which enables ABO tapping to be per performed on all body fluids in such individuals. The main drawback to ABO blood grouping is that there are relatively few different ABO blood types throughout the population, making it difficult to individualize crime stains. Nearly 40% of the population has blood type A, another 40% type O. In addition to being much less informative than DNA analysis, ABO tapping requires a fairly large amount of sample of accurate testing, much more than is required for current DNA testing procedures. With the development of faster and more accurate DNA methods, most forensic laboratories have given up ABO testing. The ABO blood group system is widely credited to have been discovered by the Austrian scientist Karl Landsteiner, who identified the blood group O, A, and B in 1900. The basic principles of the ABO system is that antigens physically exposed on the exterior of red blood cells differ between individuals who have immunological tolerance only towards what occurs in their own bodies. Each antigen, also called as agglutinogen, binds with a specific antibody or agglutinins, which cause blood cells to clump and agglutinate if they belong to the specific related antigen. This way, antigen A would agglutin with only anti A antibody and the blood group would be A blood group. Similarly, antigen B would form precipitate with only anti B antibody and the blood group will be called B blood group, while antigen A and antigen B both react to give positive clotting with anti sera A and B, the blood group would be AB. And in case where both anti serums A and B remain unreacted with given blood drop, then the blood group would set to be O. Therefore, ABO blood group people are universal acceptors because they have both antigens present and O blood group is universal done. This reaction of antigen binding with specific antibody is useful against fighting infections and may cause death where large amounts of opposite cells are encountered after a blood transfusion. Blood antigens on the surface of the red blood cells are chemical structure that is a protein called antigens. The presence of antigen allow a living system to recognize foreign biological substances. Antigens 
also impart specific characteristics to the red blood cells. These characteristics can be partly used to identify individuals. Human red blood cells have more than 150 different antigen types that has been discovered so far. Blood tapping. Blood also contains antibodies, proteins that recognizing and bind to certain specific antigens. Now here see blood type A, B, A, B and O. Antigens on RBCs are A, B and A, B and none. But antibodies are anti-B, then anti-A, none. And then we have both A and B antibodies. Blood typing. When blood containing a specific antigen is mixed with the blood containing the corresponding antibodies, the blood clots, as shown in the diagram, the clots can then be renewed by the host system. Blood typing. Human serum containing specific antibodies can be purchased. These are available from the market in case you want to buy. Separately, mix a drop of unknown blood sample with a drop of each antiserum and then you will get their reaction. That will be the idea that you can identify the blood group. Blood spatter analysis, blood stain pattern analysis known as BPA is defined as the examination of the shapes, size, locations, and distribution patterns of blood stains. In order to provide an objective analysis of the physical events that gave rise to their origin by application of concepts of biology, biochemistry, physics, and mathem mathematics. Not only can these concepts help to define and reconstruct events associated in blood letting event, but also may provide investigative leads or information. They can lead to new information as well as sporting or non-sportive evidence for victims. Suspective and witness statements. Besides this, they give investors a better understanding in collection of relevant blood samples for DNA analysis. Blood stain pattern analysis is the interpretation of blood stains at a crime scene in order to recreate the action that caused the bloodshed. Analysis examine the size, shape, distribution and location of the blood stain to form opinions about what did and or how did happen. BPA uses principles of biology, that is behavior of blood, physics, cohesiveness, capillary action and velocity, and mathematics use geometry, distance and angle to assist investigators in answering questions such as, where did the blood come from? What caused the wounds? From what direction was the victim wounded? How were the victim or victims and perpetrators post positions? What movements were made after the blood stunt? How many potential perpetrators were present? Does the blood stain evidence support or refute witness statements? Because blood behaves according to certain scientific principles, trained blood stain pattern analysis can examine the blood evidence left behind and draw conclusions as to how the blood may have been shed from what they may appear to be a random distribution of blood stain at a crime scene Analysts can categorize the stains by gathering information from spatter pattern, transfers, whites, and other marks that assist 
investigators in recreating the sequence of events that occurred after blood set. This form of physical evidence requires the analyst to recognize and interpret patterns to determine how those patterns were situated and the BPO provides information not only about what happened but just as importantly what could not have happened. This information can assist the investigator in reconstructing the crime, corroborating statements from witness and including or excluding potential perpetrators from the investigation. Types of stains. Blood stains are classified into three basic types, passive stains, transfer stains and projected or impact stains. First is passive stains include drops, flows and pools and typically result from gravity acting on an injured body. Second, transfer stains result from objects coming into contact with existing blood stains and leaving wipes, swipes or pattern transfers behind such as bloody shoe print or a smear from a body being dragged. Third is the impact stains result from blood projecting through the air and are usually seen as pattern but may also include gushes, splashes and arterial splash. Blood pattern is characterized as impact pattern that is created when a force is applied to a liquid blood source or projection pattern caused by arterial sporting expirated spray or spatter cast off an object. The characteristics of blood spatter depends on the speed at which the blood leaves the body and the type of force applied to blood source. Gunshot spatter includes both forward spatter from the exit wound and back spatter from the entrance wound. Gunshot spatter will vary depending on the caliber of the gun whereas the victim is stuck. Whether the bullet exits the body, distance between the victim and the gun, location of the victim relative to the walls, floors and objects. Typically, forward spatter is a fine mist and back spatter is large and fever. Cast of pattern results when an object swung in an arch flings blood onto nearby surfaces. This occurs when an assailant swimming the blood stains object back before inflicting another blow. Analysts can tell the direction of the impactive object by the shape of the spatter that is tail spine in the direction of motion. Counting the arch can also show the minimum number of blows delivered. Then arterial spurt refers to the spurt of blood released when a major artery is severed. The blood is propelled out of the breech blood vessel pumping of the heart and often forms an arching pattern consisting of large individual stains with a new pattern created for each time and heart pumps. Expiratory pattern is usually caused by blood from an internal injury mixing with air from the lungs being expelled through the nose, mouth or an injury to the airways or lungs. Expiratory spatter tends to form a very fine mist due to the presence exerted by the lungs moving air out of the body. Small air bubbles in the drops of blood are typically found in this type of spatter. Then angle of impact. The length of the blood stain is hypotenuse while the width is opposite size of the angle of impact. The angle of impact can be calculated from the measurement of the opposite side which is the width and the length of hypotenuse of the blood stain. That is, in case you want to define the angle of impact is equal to RC, that is opposite sides divided by hypotenuse. 
I will also tell you some inter interesting points. The when we solve the blood stain, usually we get the blood stain at the scene of crime or on the cloth or on the human body or on the furniture or a wood. It is a dried blood stain. We don't, we are not using and hardly 5% of cases we deal with the fresh blood cases. Now, it is very interesting to tell you that Many interesting cases which were 100 or 200 years old were investigated through blood stain, that is through dried blood stains, that is all in the record. Now, I will summarize the present module, what we have learned about from this module. Now, this body fluid, that is blood encountered, Invariably in most of the violent crime scene, we have learned to distinguish between any red colored liquid and blood with illustrative presumption and confirmatory test. Further, we studied how one can ascertain whether the given blood belongs to a human or animal through various species origin test. Once established, that the blood is of human origin, we do AB blood grouping test to narrow down our suspects list. Lastly, we understood the blood spatter analysis to study the angle of impact weapons of affirmance. Thank you.